I'm Stuart Roy Clark, and for 30 years, hence this show, 30 years through the lens, I've done this thing that from day one I call the homes of football. And the S that's after home is very important to me, that it's about lots of clubs, lots of grounds, lots of people, a very inclusive project. And it is about football, but it's also to, it was my way of looking at our society in a focused way and, and that I thought what's the thing I like most that I also fear for most so growing up in the 70s and 80s the game was in decline and I did fear for its life you know not that it would disappear completely but it would change to something I didn't like so I kind of thought I can both be a, a recorder of the way it is and almost shape the way I believe it should look you know I would hone in on the things that I thought were dear to me and dear to the game and then that would become the homes of football so I think everyone looks for maybe one thing that turned them on to something why they did it so it has to be my father and his love of football and a way then that football was a game to um, relate to other children in our neighborhood a communal thing to play amongst other games so there was that activity thing too when I looked at our society, I thought, what makes England or Britain or who we are? And there's a, a few things like justice and that we're an island race and that we're mad on the weather. But what are the big gathering things? We have pop festivals, but actually when I began, they weren't that, there weren't many. The biggest gatherings was always football, much more than any other sport and more than any other activity except for shopping, football. So I kind of felt it's important although it seems so trivial and silly half the time, the sort of spats you have between clubs and supporters, it's very meaningful. And it was ever more so after three big tragedies in the 80s, which was the Heisel, the Bradford Fire, and then the Hillsborough one, that really captured, in a dark sense, the, the nation's imagination, that it was so horrific. So. That was my starting point. I thought, this is something of national importance and everyone's going to be tossing it about, talking about it, what's going to become of the game. But I thought there's very little about the people who really make up the game, which is the fans. It's interesting that earlier today here in the gallery, there was a group of school children, about 11 or 12, my daughter's age, and they were looking around and I thought, oh, there's a picture down there that's of a nude. What do I say? How are they going to react to that? OK, you see it a lot in the newspapers and stuff, but I've placed it in a frame in a gallery. What are they going to make of it? So I asked the school teacher. She said, no, it's interesting. She said, so, um, you know, we're going to art galleries with paintings. There's loads of nudes and sculptures. But when you see a photograph, it's kind of a bit like, whoa, hmm. She said it didn't offend them. They found it kind of amusing. But the point we're getting towards, her and I discussed, that it's the reality that photography seems to have. You know, a painting is kind of about someone's feelings and impressions of something. But photography has this element that, you know, if you point the camera at me or something, you can see that detail comes out, you know, most of the time. This business about fans and crowds and empty grounds it fascinates me. You see, here is a Burnley crowd and it's full and there's a centre of attention, if you look hard enough, is the girl is looking up at me, so it's called the girl looks up from the long side. So people will read that and they'll think, oh, which is, ah, oh, there she is, okay, I get it, that's what the picture's about. Yeah, there's a few people wearing this and this and that, and that's the picture, good. But that picture, which is also of Burnley, I think there's more people in that picture to me. It's like an empty terrace, but it means that you're not distracted by one person thinking, is that what the story's about? You can just look at it and think, Oh, since football began, and that ground was there at the start, Burnley have played on it ever since. That terrace has since gone, but for many years, 100 years almost, that was the terrace that all those people stood on. So you can look at that and just imagine, you know, if not your father, grandfather, other people's and parents, on that terrace. So you, I kind of look at that and just go into a fantasy world of all the people. This is what that picture's about. It's an emptiness, but in a way, it sings to me, it, 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 there's a throng of people. I just imagine anyone who ever supported Burnley is on that terrace.